This is the video for section 1.4. It's about rounding and estimating. When we round a whole number, that means that we're approximating it. So for example, if we're rounding 23 to the nearest 10, we want to look at which value of 10 is the closest to it. So the one that's the closest to 23 is the 20. On this one, if we want to round 48 to the nearest 10, we know it's between 40 and 50, but the one it's the closest to is the 50. And finally, what if we have one that's halfway in between? So if we're trying to round 15 to the nearest 10, it's halfway between 10 and 20. The standard way that we do this is if the digit is 5, we round up. So we would round this one up to 20. We're going to go through a set of steps to help you round whole numbers to a certain place value. And we'll do an example as we go through these steps. So the first step, find the digit to the right of the place value to be rounded. So if we're looking at the example, we want to round this number to the nearest hundred. So we want to locate the digit to the right of the hundreds place. One way to do this is to draw a line just to the right of the place that we're trying to round to. So here's the hundreds place and I drew the line just to the right of that. So the digit that we're going to look at right now is the 7. So if this digit is 5 or greater, then we're going to add 1 to the digit on the left side of the line and then we're going to make the remaining digits over here 0. Since 7 is greater than 5, that means that we want to add 1 to our 6, so that's going to give us 87 instead of 86, and then we'll make the rest of the digits to the right of the line 0. So there's our number rounded to the nearest 100. Let's look at another example. Let's take a different number and round to the nearest 100. So again, we're rounding this to the nearest hundred. So we can still do this first step. Here's our hundreds place. We're going to draw a line just to the right of that. But this time, since we're looking at the two, the two isn't going to fit into what we had here in step two. It's not five or greater. So then we have to go on to our third step because the two is less than five. So that means that we're going to leave this eight the same But then we're still going to make everything to the right of the line zeros. So again, the reason we were doing this was that 2 is less than 5. Here are some examples. If we went around 312 to the nearest 100, again, here's the hundreds place. So we're going to draw the line to the right of that. Then we look at the first digit to the right of that line, which is a 1. 1 is less than 5. So that means that we're going to leave the 3 alone and we're going to replace these two digits with zeros. So we're going to end up with 300. That's our rounded answer. How about this one? We went around 346 to the nearest 10. Here's our tens place. So we draw the line right there. That means that we're looking at the 6. Since it's greater than 5, that means that we're going to do two, we're going to do step 2 on the previous page, which means we're going to add 1 to the 4. So we're going to make that 3, 5, and then anything to the right of our line has to be a 0. So here's our rounded. For this next one, we're going to round the two values we have before adding so that we can just estimate the sum. So we're going to start out by rounding 2,731 to the nearest thousand. So here's the thousands place. Our line goes to the right of that. So we're looking at the 7. That's greater than 5. 
So that means that we're going to add one to our two. So get, that gives us a three there, and then we make the rest of these zeros. Now we'll round our 3,020. The same way, we're looking at the thousands place, so we put a line to the right of it. Then we're looking at zero, that's less than five. So that means that we're going to keep our thousands digit the same. We make all the rest of these zeros. So here are our two rounded values. And if we want to estimate the sum, then we're just going to add these together. And this is a little bit easier addition than it would have been to do the original one. So our estimated answer is 6,000. Okay, and we're doing the same thing down here. We're rounding these to the nearest thousand. We have our 17,032. There's our thousands place. So we're looking at the zero. Well, that's less than five. So that means that we leave the seven alone. We make the rest of those zeros. And with this number, 12,513, the digit we're looking at is the five. And remember, if we do have a five, that means that we're going to go up with our rounding. So if we have a digit of five, that means that we're going to take the digit in our thousands place and make it one more. So we're going to make that a three and the rest of these are zeros. And now that we've estimated those two, we can do the subtraction. And again, this subtraction is going to be much easier than what we would have done otherwise. So for our estimated answer, we get 4,000. Now making estimates is something that we do in real life a lot. It's often the quickest way to solve real life problems if the solutions don't have to be exact. So here's some examples. At the last three dan dances, we had attendance of 657, 403, and 559 students. We're just going to estimate the total attendance by rounding each of these numbers to the nearest hundred. So if we take our 657, and round that to the nearest hundred. Again, since we have a five here, that means that we're going to go up one. So we're going to go from six up to seven. So that rounds to 700. Our next number to round was 403. This one we have a zero that we're looking at. Since that's less than five, we'll leave the four alone. So that rounds to 400. And last of all, we had 559. Again, since we have a 5 here, we're going to round this up. So the 5 to the left of that will make a 6. So this whole number rounds to 600. So now if we're going to add those three, We're going to get 7 plus 4 is 11, plus 6 is 17. So our estimate of the total attendance is 1,700. Okay, let's look at this one down here. In this one, we have enrollment figures that increased from 6,721 to 7,653. We're going to round each number to the nearest hundred to estimate the increase. So let's start by doing the rounding part. If we want to round to the nearest hundred, then we put our line right after the hundreds place. So in this one, we're looking at the two. That's less than five. So we're going to leave the seven alone. Remember, remember to put the zeros in the next places after that. With this one, our line goes right after the six. In this one, we're looking at the 5. Since that's a 5, we're going to round this up. So we're going to change that 6 to a 7, and then put our zeros. Okay, so here are our two rounded numbers. 
Now the next question is what we have to do to find the answer to the problem. We want to estimate the increase when the enrollment went up from approximately 6700 to 7700. So we want to know the difference between those two values. So if we're trying finding the difference between 7700 and 6700 that means that we're going to subtract so we're going to take 7700 minus 6700 if we subtract those two we're going to come up with 1000 so the approximate increase was 1000 students Another place you can use estimation is if you're using a calculator to do problems. Sometimes using a calculator it's easy to make mistakes. For example, pressing a key too hard so that you get an extra digit or not pressing it hard enough so that you don't get a digit that you were supposed to. So this is a good way just to check your answers really quickly.